This is a well-known mathematical structure known as the Barnsley Fern. It's a fern of ferns of ferns. The point is that it's self-similar, like the Sierpinski Triangle. Just like the triangle can be created with a chaos game by choosing a random location in space and allowing that point to move according to a random selection of one of three special functions, the fern can be created in the same way with four special functions. The first function will take any point and move it onto a line at the center. The next will move points up and a little bit to the right. The next rotates everything to the left, and the last flips everything to the right. At this stage, it might not be clear how these four functions relate to the fern itself exactly, so let's do the same visualization again, but this time with a bunch of possible points on the fern itself. Here, it's obvious that the first function creates the stem, the second creates successive ferns as we move up and to the right, the third creates the first leaf on the left, and the fourth creates the first leaf on the right. Putting it all together, it's a bit more obvious how these functions can create ferns of ferns, but the cool part is that we can actually manipulate the fern by modifying the transformations. A scale along x for the first function, for example, could turn all of the stems into leaves. If we give a shear to the second function along x, we could make it tilt to and fro. We could also pluck all the leaves on the left or right by changing the translation of the last two functions. Even though it's not obvious exactly how a set of functions will play together to create a structure, by looking at each function individually, we can sometimes guess as to what it might look like in the end. And the Barnsley Fern is a relatively intuitive example of function systems with a clear visual output, and for this reason, it's worth highlighting as a way to better understand iterated function systems as a whole. Anyway, the chapter is available on the Algorithm Archive and is currently awaiting language-specific implementations, so please check it out if you want more information. And that's really all I wanted to say. There is one particular visual that I needed to understand the fern, but I couldn't find it anywhere. So that's why this video exists, and also why it's kind of short. As always, if you like this content and you want to see it continue in the future, please consider supporting me on either GitHub Sponsors or Patreon. Also, thanks to those who have already chosen to support me, like Mossy, Valentin, and Jeremy. And Jeremy, thanks again for the FFT implementation in Scratch. Gotta be honest, it's kind of amazing, but I don't know if it's particularly useful. So I guess, thanks again everyone for watching, and I'll see you next time.